All right, here it is, my top five early ice walleye locations. And make sure you stick around to number five because it's kind of a sneaky location that doesn't get a lot of pressure, but I've had some of my best days on it in the last few years. So we're gonna jump right into number one here. And number one here is shallow, weedy flats. And this is a very consistent pattern for a lot of lakes in the upper Midwest here. And it is a very consistent pattern for a good reason. There's a lot of stuff for these fish to be around. This is a lot of times some of the only good green weeds around, so they have oxygen, they have bait, they have a lot of things that they are looking for this time of year. And so it's kind of keeping these fish around and honestly can keep them around throughout most of the day and most of the night. So it's a very consistent pattern for those reasons. And a couple things you're looking for when you're looking for these shallow weedy flats is one, you're looking for kind of good sparse weeds. You don't want anything necessarily too thick. If you do get some thicker weeds, you want some areas where there's gonna be some openings because one, if it's too thick, it's gonna be tough to fish. And I haven't seemed to have as good of luck around some of that thicker weeds. So you're looking for sparse weeds or some patchy weeds where it might be thick in certain areas, but have some open areas in it as well. Another thing that can be key is having it be adjacent to some sort of deep water, not necessarily the deepest water in the lake, but just some sort of deeper water, a lot of times 15, 20, 25, 30 feet, whatever that is, having some sort of deep water that they can escape to if needed. And the more sides that you can have deep water on, the better. If it's kind of like a peninsula sticking out and you have deep water on three sides, even better. And so when we're looking for these sparse weeds, a lot of times you can actually see them. If you go out early where there's no snow on the ice, I've done it a lot of times where I can actually just walk around and I'll look and I will see with my eyes looking underneath the ice where some of these good green weeds are, where some of these patches are. Um, and sometimes you can honestly even see some of these walleyes kind of cruising around. They get pretty spooky, but every once in a while you can see them as they swim around in and around these weeds. And they kind of seem to follow these weed edges, just like you would see on kind of a weed line break. And if there's snow on the ice, it's really easy to drop your live scope in, drop an underwater camera in, and kind of see what you're looking at, seeing how thick the weeds are, where they are in the direction, um, being able to drop the camera down to see if they're good green weeds. But even before you get on the lake, this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about. Even before you get on the lake, you can find some of these areas with an app that I kind of talked about in my last video, uh, but it's one that I really wanted to hit a little bit more because during this time when I'm not able to even be out on the ice yet, I can really do some digging and find some really good spots on this app. It's called Omnia Premium Pro. They asked me to check it out and kind of give my feedback. So I'm gonna share some of this insight with you on some of the things that I found to be beneficial with this app and some things that will help you specifically related to this first spot, these shallow weedy flats. So I'm going to pull open the app here. And as I'm opening up, if you want to kind of follow along, look for yourself, um, I'll put a link in the description to the Omnia app. That way you can kind of take it out, download it, check it out. Um, I do believe they do a free trial that you can check out and just kind of follow along if you want along with this video. So as I open up, you can see a lot of really great features. Right now I'm on a satellite version and as I click into the overlays, they had a lot of different overlays. As you can see, I talked through a little bit of them last video, but this one specifically I'm going to talk about is this sea map veg vegetation. You can see I have it highlighted right now. And so there's all these different overlays and so I select the CMAP vegetation and then I click done. Now I can really see, kind of look over a variety of lakes. I haven't fished any of these lakes. I'm just kind of scanning around of wherever the app brought me. So you can see how easy it is to kind of dial in where some of these weeds are, what some of that structure is that you're looking for. It really highlights it very easily and you can see even where there's deep water adjacent as I kind of pan around to a few of these lakes. And as I'm kind of looking through this app, um, there are definitely some things that they are going to improve and from what I hear, they are improving them every day, kind of like I talked about in my last video, but adding some more of the maps, adding some more of these other features, and just kind of getting some more information dialed in, getting it a little more detailed. Um, so I'm really looking forward to checking that out. But I do see a ton of application, especially for this early ice time frame that we're in right now. So I can easily go out and scout, find some of these weeds, find some of these hard bottom areas, whatever it is, um, using an app, even when I'm sitting at home. So I'm gonna throw a few screenshots from the app up here. I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the things that we're looking for. You know, when you can find some areas that stick out towards that deeper water, you're looking for a little bit bigger area because we don't necessarily want that one tiny area with a little bit of weeds on it. I'm looking for bigger areas. And like I said, the more deep water on each side that you can have, the more sides that have deep water, the better. So I'm looking for areas that stick out a little bit like this with deep water around green weeds over the whole thing. Again, you don't want something so expansive that it's going to be really hard to break down, but kind of finding that happy medium of a big enough area that's going to hold fish, but also one that you're going to be able to break down yourself or with a few buddies. And one suggestion that I do have when you're doing this, make sure you drill your holes first because these fish can get very spooky. So when you drill a hole and drop a line in or drill a hole and drop your live scope in, whatever it is, those fish often might not be there. 
because they're gonna spook. Where if you drill it out kind of first and either set tip ups up or go around hopping from hole to hole, that is gonna be much more beneficial being able to see these fish in case they do spook from that auger. Number two is a classic early ice spot that's so consistent, I have to mention, and that is your typical shoreline breaks. This might be something that drops off directly from the shore or might be a shallow flat and then it drops off. Whatever those first initial shoreline breaks are, those are an absolute highway for these early ice walleyes. A lot of times these fish are cruising back and forth, whether it's an old weed edge, whatever it is, but these steep breaks, especially when they bottom out in that 15 to 25 foot range, I'm not looking for something that will drop all the way to 60, 70 feet, or even 40, 50 feet. I'm looking for something that drops off and then starts to flatten out, even if it's a gradual break after that, but flattens out in that 15 to 25 foot range. And depending on the body of water, that depth range is going to vary a little bit. Some lakes that I fish, that like 13 foot range right off that first break is key. And you can kind of be anywhere along the break line, but as long as you're in that depth range, you're gonna see fish throughout the night. And another thing with this pattern is that it is a very, very good and very consistent consistent um, late night, basically right before it gets dark, um, there gets to be a good movement of fish and a lot of times they are aggressive and ready. Another thing that you can do to give yourself a little better chance and a little better percentage of coming across these fish is finding something along that break line that might hold fish a little bit. That might even be just a small pile of rocks, maybe it's some weeds. Another one is current. If you can find one of these shoreline breaks that has current in or around it or maybe even adjacent to it, that is key. It might be a river flowing in or a river flowing out, but this early ice time, that current can be a huge indicator to where you're gonna see some of these fish. And one of the best parts about this shoreline break is a lot of times it's early ice, you are not able to drive your snowmobile or your ATV out yet, is a lot of times just walking. And so instead of walking, 500 yards, 1,000 yards, whatever it might be to get to a hump in the middle of the lake. Being able to walk out just 50 yards and you're already in a prime location to fish. Location number three is inside turns. And this is something that might be along a shoreline break. Maybe there's a shallow weedy flat that sticks out and a shoreline on the other side. Whatever it is, it's some sort of inside turn that can kind of hold these fish and funnel these fish. You know, these inside turns can be on structure as well, maybe out over some of that mid-lake structure. But what I found to be the best, it can be honestly even shallow. I've had good luck in these shallow inside turns in like five to 10 feet. Sometimes um, along with some of that shallow bite, it kind of mixes in and you get two good bites going on at one time. But anytime there's this nice inside turn, it can even be a pretty steep break down to 20 feet or so. But having that nice inside turn, it seems that these fish just funnel in there. They might be coming in over that deeper water. They might be running along the shoreline. And it just is something that funnels these fish and kind of holds them in, almost like some walls holding them in. And the nice thing is, when you have these, they have easy access to weeds, to bait, to cover, and they have that very close by on multiple sides. So because these fish are so concentrated and can be held so concentrated in these areas, these are a very productive early ice spot that really just gives you a high percentage chance. If you're gonna go out, say after work or after school, when it gets dark so early, it's an easy thing to go to one spot, find a high percentage area like this inside turn and being able to have some action in a short amount of time. If you're finding value in this so far, I would love it if you would like, comment, whatever it is, kind of show your support because I really kind of take a look at that and see what content do the people that watch my videos really appreciate and I wanna produce more content like that. So again, if you're finding value, like it, comment, whatever it is, I I would really appreciate that. Moving on to location number four, that's mid lake structure. And this is a very consistent bite that happens on a lot of bodies of water that have any sort of structure in that basin area of the lake, you know, kind of adjacent to some of that deep water. This is a prime bite for those early and low light periods. These fish definitely seem to kind of cruise in during that low light period and they are ready to feed. This is another one of those spots that you can be very effective with a short amount of time because you know these fish are gonna be aggressive. You're not necessarily gonna see a bunch of fish and have none bite. I mean, obviously that can happen, but this tends to be a bite that is a pretty aggressive bite, and it can be something like a shallow flat. Maybe it's a shallow piece of structure. It comes up to like five feet in the middle of the deep basin, and they're not necessarily gonna be on top, but they might be cruising the edges, almost like it's a shoreline break or they might be sitting on top. Maybe it's a tops out on like 25 feet and there's some stuff on top. Maybe there's some rocks, some boulders, whatever it is. Being able to find some of those spots on the spots can be super critical in that as well. I'm not gonna talk a lot about some of the intricacies involved in this bite or like maybe some of those spots on the spot because I already have a video where I detail exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll link that in the description below as well. But finding some of that mid lake structure adjacent to deep water early and late during that low light period. And kind of a, another one that I'm gonna add onto this that's similar but not necessarily the same, I'll call it maybe 4B, and that is fishing saddles. You know, these might be on mid-lake structure, but what I tend to find is anytime there's these saddles
hills, maybe it's two shallower humps and they have a little saddle in between them. That tends to be an incredibly high percentage area because you have fish moving around multiple locations and you can kind of get the action from both pieces of structure in one spot. It also might be something where it's two pieces of land, maybe it's a little pinch point and there's a little saddle in between. Um, sometimes that might also have some current, but it's gonna be an area where these fish are gonna funnel through, again, that high percentage area where you're gonna see these fish moving through. All right, we've made it on to location number five. And like I said, this one's kind of a sneaky one that a lot of people don't do, and that is either these hard bottom flats or these hard bottom to soft bottom transitions. So again, I'm gonna throw up some screenshots on that Omnia Premium Pro app. I'm gonna kind of show you, you can see in the legend that the different hardness in these bottoms. So this is another great use for this Omnia Premium Pro. You have the vegetation, you have the bottom hardness. You can easily see the difference in the hardness of the bottom just with this app. You know, this isn't a pattern that I'm necessarily fishing shallow. A lot of times what I'm looking for is something in that 15 to 25 foot range. And this is actually kind of a pattern that I found by accident. I had fished some of these areas, had some really good success. And in the summer, I was trying to figure out what was going on and I was driving over some of these areas and I saw this hard bottom transition. So that's just another tip is there's some areas that you have good luck through the ice and you don't always know what's going on. Take a look, drive over your side imaging, whatever it might be, your 2D, drive over it in the boat and it'll really help kind of dial in that picture of what's going on down there. And so these hard bottom flats, these transition areas, if they are adjacent to maybe a shoreline break, some of my favorite spots in the last couple of years have been these shoreline breaks, kind of like I talked about earlier, but then there's just a little bit, it's almost like a point, but not really, just a little bit of the change in the contours and you can see, it's got hard bottom on top and soft bottom on each side. And again, when you look at a map, this might not even be something that you look at and looks like a point. You might not even give it much mind because the contours are so spread out. But again, it's just that little bit of difference that can kind of hold these fish. And this has been a very consistent bite. And this is one that I've actually had pretty good luck with, not even just at last light. It can be a pretty consistent bite throughout the whole day. And so a lot of times I'll look at some of the lakes that I fish and I will see, okay, where's maybe this steep break and where's a little bit of a spot that's maybe a little bit harder. It might have a small circle. Maybe it's a little bit extended area, but you can see there's these transitions. This is not one of those spots where I'm looking for these huge expansive areas. This is one that's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit more of that transition between that hard to soft bottom. This is something that's fished a decent amount in the fall from people in a boat, but it seems like people, once that ice forms, they almost forget about some of these areas and they kind of kick into a different mindset. But again, these fish are still going to be hanging around some of those transition areas. So that's location number five. And another feature that I really like on this Omnia Premium Pro app is you can actually see the water temp. So when I'm kind of sitting around, I don't want to necessarily drive to each lake and see how it's progressing or maybe it's this time of year and the lakes are still in the 40 degree range. I can see, okay, this lake is maybe down in the 30s finally, but this one's still in that mid 40s. You know, these lakes can cool and warm so differently depending on their makeup. So being able to kind of get an eye on that, you can really tell and dial in which lakes are going to be maybe ready even a few days earlier than others. So that's another one another little feature on this app that I would recommend checking out if you're kind of itching to get on the ice like I am, a way to kind of be productive and be proactive with what you're going to be doing here in a few weeks. So there it is. I hope you're excited as I am for early ice. I'm going to be kicking out a bunch of content this winter. So if there's things that you're specifically looking for, make sure you drop them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys are looking for. Maybe it's more educational videos like this. Maybe it's a little more of the entertainment or maybe some more of the adventure, like going to some of these backcountry lakes and kind of filming what those look like or going to these destination locations. Whatever it is, let me know what you're looking for. Drop it in the comments and I would love to get some of these ideas and be able to cater them to you. But as always, appreciate the support. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.